Campfire is brought to you by. We are so excited to announce that the Campfire After Dark a live tour is coming back. We are first returning to Los Angeles on November 20th at the Bourbon Room. And then we will be in London. Yes, the first international date of the Campfire After Dark live experience is coming to London, of course, because this is where it all began at our first meet and greet. On December 8th, we will be at Neon 194. This live show is presented by our friends over at AEG. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, already what are you waiting for december is right around the corner every campfire after dark live experience is so different than the, the than the other so make a trip or if you live in london come to the campfire after dark live experience and just announce washington dc we're coming back we're coming back yes we're coming back to union stage washington dc come out get your tickets are now available let's sell out all three shows for 2024 and the early part of 2025. We'll be in D.C. on January 24th. More information on all tour dates will be available in the description. I'll see you guys soon. You're listening to Kempire here on the Kempire Radio Network. So I thought of this idea because I know a lot of people are feeling strong feelings today in regards to the presidential election and the election overall yesterday. So I had a a great idea. I said, what could we possibly talk about other than the election? And one of the things that I've always wanted to do was to dissect, unpack the Wendy Williams and Whitney Houston interview. So this is going to be a throwback, but new fresh ideas on the impact of this interview, the impact that it had on Wendy Williams and the impact that it had on people's image of the once, you know, squeaky clean image of Whitney Houston. So let's unpack and take a listen to this interview. And I will be stopping and pausing, just giving my thoughts and perspectives on what I felt when I originally heard this interview versus 21 years later listening to this interview. So I'm just waiting for the phone to ring. I said she's going to be calling. Some of you are probably like, well, I know what you're saying because I've gotten your faxes. Why isn't she coming in the studio? Just calm down. So there's some things that per- perhaps it's just better that we just talk on the phone. <laughs> Art, I hope you're ready with whatever kind of extra buttons you have to be ready with. If you leave the room while I'm talking to Whitney, we're going to have to fight. Okay, I'm out here. Okay. With your finger on the on the pulse of the curse word. Oh, Whitney's there. Well, you mean Whitney? Yes. All right, you guys. First, there was Mary J. Blige and J-Lo and Mariah Carey. Who else did we talk to that we thoroughly luxuriated in that we, wow. Some of you might say Janet, but not the same. I don't know why, but I could take that or leave it. I would love to have it. But if I didn't have it, it, damn. Pause. And if you guys enjoy content like this, be sure to, first of all, like the video. If you're listening to this, give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Help us get to to 1,000 reviews on those platforms. But let me know if you want me to unpack some of Wendy's other legendary interviews with people like Mariah Carey. Oprah just celebrated the 49th birthday yesterday. I idolize her. But even Oprah, like, it's not this... Take it or, take it or leave it, you know what I mean? Okay, let's go in. Whitney, Whitney, Whitney. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my Lord. Have I waited for this day? Have you? Well, yes, I have. Haven't you? Whitney. Yes, dear. Absolutely. I know it. I don't believe that I've ever met you in my entire career. Isn't that funny? You talk about me all the time. And you are top billing. Is that why you talk about me all the time? Absolutely. You don't even know me. me. But here's the thing. I talk about you in two ways. In the the way that the media talks about with me. Yes. But I always talk about you as being one of the greatest voices of our time. Mariah Carey is another one. You two do two separate works, but you have a voice that is just unbeatable with you. I love you, brother. I thank you for that. I really do because I know it's part of everything you put in my records. I do. I know that. And I also feel like you and I have something in common. So you do. 
Well, yeah, besides, besides the, you know, the motherhood thing and, okay. and, and so on and so forth. Whitney, your, your new CD is out now. Yes. For the first week, it did very well. It's not doing quite as well right now compared to perhaps what the record label thought it would be doing. Uh, it's never what you thought I should be doing. Okay. It's never what you think I should be doing. It's never what you think you say I'm doing. It is what's going to happen. You see what I'm saying? I don't want my album to peak too quickly. I don't want it to peak too quickly because because I wanted to go to the summer, uh -huh. the fall. Okay, I understand. So there is a, a plan. Okay. You don't, you understand what I mean? Like you said, you're scared to want to basis. Are we going to talk about how you going to talk about them? Yes. Yeah. I just want to pause it there because we're talking about, you know, this was like her first, well, not her first studio album in, in a long time, but we're, we're riding off the high of the, you know, a lot of people used to refer to Whitney Houston as a soundtrack queen because she had the bodyguard and then waiting to exhale. So, you know, the fact that Whitney's music wasn't doing those types of numbers, it's hard to mimic the bodyguard. Uh, even today, it's hard to mimic a lot of what we've seen artists like Whitney and Mariah Carey do during this time when you had to actually sell CDs versus streaming, which is far easier to access than going to the store and buying a record. That's how I do. So we play, we love the song, the Dear John Letter here on the show. Yes, ma'am. And um, speaking of letters, you no longer have to write to Bobby. Bobby's out of jail. Bobby's back home now. Yes, baby. You ain't, don't you, you get on this. Hold on. So you got the 411. You should know. I want to make sure that I have all my stories straight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby. He's home. Well, and then chat. Do you regret the Sawyer interview? No. Why should I? Well, it didn't exactly show you in the best light. You don't think so? Well, you don't, Wendy, you don't show yourself in the best light. People still listen to you. Yeah, but I'm on the radio every day. Yeah, we, see, we, don't, we just don't get to see your face, but they should know what you look like. I understand that, uh, Whitney. Perhaps one day I will have a TV show, but in terms of what I do, yeah. when I'm not shown in the best light, I guess mm -hmm. one of the best things that I love about my career is, is that there's always tomorrow to come back. See, and I love about my career uh -huh. my music speaks for itself. Yeah, well, it does. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I am the second wife's most interviewed behind Monica Lewinsky in the history of interviews. I'm surprised you're second to her. I mean... Pause. You guys do remember the legendary, iconic interview between Diane Sawyer and Whitney Houston. That's where the term crack is whack comes from. Yes. As far as... Yeah, I mean, you're not like too cool about coming behind her, but, you know, it's all right with me because, um, you know, I got a lot of mileage from that. I think that people basically... The people that I talk to that have made comments to me uh -huh. were very proud of me because it was a moment. See, I'm not one for sitting down and talking to people. I, you know, you can talk all you want about me, but my mother always said, don't try to be kind of lie with truth, you know, because then you make it worse because people like to lie for whatever reason they like to lie on you about. Uh -huh. However, um, I thought that it was a major step for me to sit with Diane Sawyer, the biggest interviewer in the world, and talk with her and give her what, um, basically, um, I thought I could get, you know, and I think people enjoy that seeing me and seeing um, me growing and being a spiritual person and that I have a family that loves me and cares about me and protects me and um, that was the um, idea well Andy. yeah no it, it was very entertaining you thought it was entertaining uh, yes ah, you're funny uh, yeah I mean please me and everybody we, we were all watching together I recently it was a very funny moment yeah, well, yeah, yeah. From from start to end, it was quite entertaining, Whitney. Well, I'm glad you entertained because you watched it, didn't you? So, so Whitney, as as far as you stand with drug use, is there drug use going on at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't ask me no questions like I'm a child. You talk to your baby about her. What was she gonna be? Ah, cause front thing of what she gotta deal with. And uh, and. And, and, Don't ask me like I'm a child, because I'm not a child, Wendy. My child is a little boy, and I will talk to him next month. Don't talk to me about that. Don't talk to me about that. But listen, Whitney, I, I I will talk to my son about drugs because I have been where the world speculates where you are. We should. Uh, I was a full blown cocaine addict, so I. Yeah, I never mind. Move on. Well, you know that was my problem, Whitney. You know, for Did you have God to help you? And no, I I managed. Thank God, because I have a good man, and, so, and so thank God I was able to just rise up thank above God, it Wendy. and quit. And all I asked was, okay, okay. And and look, fast forward. 
20 years later and you hear how Wendy refers to her good man, the man that ended up cheating on her for 15 plus years and even had a baby on her. We also, Wendy talked about in her book her own addiction issues and things like that. And a lot of people say the reason why Wendy is where she is today is because of addiction. So one of the things about this interview, some people speculate that this really made Wendy's career. It elevated her career. And I never really thought of it that way. But after this interview, it was a big interview for her to get at the time as a radio personality. She was already a big time radio personality, but she wasn't on television or anything like that. Television came later. But some people say that this interview opened doors for Wendy or opened Wendy to a market that people didn't that weren't familiar with her because Wendy really was a shock jock that was heavy in the hip-hop and R&B community. But at the time, Whitney Houston was a huge pop icon. This is after The Bodyguard, so she became even bigger. So the fact that, first of all, it didn't paint her in the best light, this interview. She didn't sound like the polished Whitney Houston that Clive Davis put out there when she first came out. So this gained a lot of traction and really benefited Wendy Williams at the time. And you, on Diane Sawyer, also mentioned that you wanted to see receipts behind the drug use. Yeah, yeah. Man, if I spent that much money, somebody better give me the receipts so I get a tax return. Well, speaking of spending money, so recently I was hearing that you were trying to trim the budget, which, by the way, Whitney, I thought that this was something... I mean, who the hell are you to trim the budget? Who's calling you and telling you? Um, well, I got this story from a gossip named Steve Hers. You ever hear of him? No. Well, I'm not into the gossip. Yeah. Steve Hers is a West Coast correspondent, and we we I communicate with all the different gossips. Uh, it's it's what we do, you know. Yeah, we, we're going to have a gossip lunch, huh? Something like something like that. <laughs> anyway, Whitney. Yeah. Uh, they're saying that um, you're doing some massive budget cuts. I'm doing massive changes. And you know what? Yeah. I, I wanted to let you know that this is something. I think it's good. This is a good Whitney thing. You like it. You approve. Yeah, I really approve. Oh, Whitney, please. <laughs> Whitney, first of all, a couple things to keep in mind. You know, we talk a lot about astrological signs. Wendy is a Cancer. Whitney is a Leo. So this is big Leo energy. You approve. You approve. There were rumors that Whitney was having money troubles, especially in her last few years when she did the... Her last tour, her last tour for that last album with the song I Look To You, Whitney allegedly went on tour because she needed the money. So that was that was the rumors. But this is way this is way before any of that. So there have been rumors about money issues at the time. But you also have to remember at one particular time when uh, when Whitney Whitney had signed like this huge it was like the it was like a record breaking deal that she signed with Arista at the time. So for her to allegedly be out of money, people speculated that she spent that money on drugs. And not only that. If you look at the stories, Whitney took care of a lot of people within her family, not just her mother, not just her daughter, not just Bob. There were a lot of people that were on the payroll, including her father, who people have accused of taking money from her as well. So they were saying that you were you cut your mother's um See, you don't know what the f- allowance. You don't make me curse on the radio. I'm not trying to be, you know, come on. Well, Steve was saying it was from about like sixteen hundred dollars a week to about five hundred dollars a week. You're not okay, to the flat. Okay. He yeah, also, don't anybody else gonna think I'd do that to my mother, you little down dirty. He also was letting me know that Michael, Gary, and your sister Donna, who run your nippy company, are also uh, experiencing the slashes across the board. They were saying that you have a 24-hour-a-day bar on site at your studio that you're now cutting down and you're not making your personal chef available to people to just talk in your house and just order food and stuff. I think that's what I'm doing. never happened. I don't even know what the f- you're talking about. Well, I have no idea what you're talking about, Wendy. How is Bobby Christina doing? Growing and being a beautiful young lady that God sent her here to be. Yeah, she's nine now, right? Yes, yeah, she is. Mm. When your husband was um, incarcerated for those few days, what types of things do you tell her concerning, like, do you say, like, daddy's away visiting Boston? Or? I don't want to talk to her. We tell her she was, she's a spectator. She's a child who has intelligence. Okay. My child is smart. No, what I'm I talk 
And she shuts her mouth. I talk to her like she's a frozen human being, okay? And I give her just as much as she can handle for a nine year old because I'm her mother, okay? And that's how we deal with it. Never mind what I told her, but she know the deal. Well, a lot of a lot of parents, a lot of parents whose spouse or what have you goes through something, a lot of, particularly because that was only eight days, would not either take them out of school for the eight days or take them away from watching TV to, you know, see how long. What I did protect my daughter, Wendy, just like you would do to protect her son, okay? All right. You are very defensive, Whitney. I have to be, Wendy. You talk about me every f***ing day. Well, Whitney. And every other day. Whitney, you, you keep yourself in the headlines. No, Wendy. You don't keep me in the headlines. I mind my business. I try to maintain what I've got. I don't give a shit about what you're doing all the time. As long as you're healthy and God is blessing you and you're doing the right thing and being a decent person, I can feel that. When's the last time you talked to Robin? About a week ago. Okay, Robin, what's going on? Hey, 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 Robin, Robin, her Robin Crawford did an interview with Wendy Williams because she had written the book after Wendy after Whitney's passing and talked about their romantic relationship. So a lot of people, even in with the recent death of Sissy Houston, there have been a lot of people saying, you know, Sissy never really supported Whitney. Whitney was never able to live her real true life in regards to being out there and proud. Look, I don't know if I believe 100% that Whitney Houston was a, a lesbian. Maybe she had maybe she was bisexual or maybe she was experimenting because we don't know besides Robin, any other women. I mean, I'm sure there are rumors, but no one else has come out and said, I've had an intimate relationship with, with Whitney Houston. So, but a lot of people were slamming sissy for, you know, not allowing Whitney to live her full authentic life as a woman that might love another woman. If you saw the most recent biopic that they did, on Whitney Houston, they el- illustrate that romantic relationship a little bit in in that movie. Friends, yeah. Okay, will she be working back with you, or is she so- Wendy, 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 Wendy? Yeah. Oh, Robin's not doing anything. No, Robin don't work for me. She'll work for me now. Moving right along. Uh-huh. Okay, so okay. so okay. Our, our king of R and B is he working on an album? Bobby is Bobby working on an album? Yes, ma'am. When do you think his album will be out? Uh, very soon, Wendy, I'm sure. A numerologist came on the show the other week. Pause before we talk to num- numerology because you know we love we love that. Bobby Brown was recently at the Usher concert and Usher paid tribute to Bobby by playing, I I forgot what song it was, but when you think back to Bobby's career, he was like the original bad boy of of R&B. And I, I like seeing him be celebrated because you think of what Bobby Brown has gone through, through his throughout his life, the losses that he, that he's experienced in regards to his children, and I think a soul connection with Whitney Houston as well. But it was nice to kind of see people pay tribute to him because I think people don't really pay tribute to Bobby Brown and his legacy within music. Cause is Bobby Brown the best singer? No, but he definitely had some hits. He definitely had some hits and he had a legendary relationship with Whitney Houston. Oh, yeah. And we still Wendy, I'm sure. A numerologist came on the show the other week. Oh, yeah. And we, we ran you know, she's the numbers. And for what it's worth, the numerologist said that you and Bobby are so right for each other. Honey, he, he's so right. He never been more right in his life. That's the most right thing you've ever said. Yeah, thank you, Whitney. Uh-huh. How's your father doing? Not well. Yeah. The, his partner, Kevin Skinner. <laughs> this part's a little fuzzy. You know, because we have to remember, this interview is being streamed from from radio days from years ago, over 20 years ago. I am moving right along. And I didn't talk to him, Whitney. I don't want to talk about him. He's not my friend, okay? Okay. You want to be my friend? I like to be your friend, I think. Well, you're so defensive. Is this how you treat your friends? No, <laughs> but you're not my friend. You just said you want to be my friend. I said, I want. See, see, I want to be your friend. When I next, said, I am your friend. When's the next time you're going to hit your big screen? I'm working on it, dude, girl. I'm working on it. I got some trips today. I'm going to read, read it on them and look at them, but you're not very careful about the movies I do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just a matter of time. Great. So how long do you think that you're going to be, uh, how long will it be between albums? Have you already started mulling over in your head when your next album is going to come out and what kind of material you're going to be working with? Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. Have you spoken to Brandy since she had her baby? Yes, I talk to her maybe every week. Wow. Yeah. 
I, I mean, because you're the kind of money that you have is like, you know, beyond most people's imagination. When dear friends like Brandy have babies, do you actually pick out the gift for them or do you send like an assistant to? No, no, I pick out my gift, darling. What do people, you... people who are personal to me, I pick my own gift out. What did you get for Brandy? I got her a silver rattle that um, it took me rattle and I got her picture frame that has my name and Bobby's name on it. I'll be reading Uncle Bobby and Cousin Chrissy. And, you know, it's like a family thing. So that, you know, it's... I just want to pause this because one of the things that I see all the time, just because that's what I engage in, so the algorithm always feeds me stories about Whitney Houston from over the years. And one of the accounts, I think it's called Whitney X Bobby on Instagram. And they always post like old stories that people have of Whitney Houston. And one of the things that I have to have to that I have to say is that consistently behind the scenes, people tell this these stories later after her passing of how much of a girl's girl, how supportive Whitney Houston was of other artists, artists that she didn't have to even be supportive of, but she was just so humble and just so, just a girl's girl. And there's just so many stories of that. So right now she's talking about Brandy and you remember she gave Brandy, Brandy loved Whitney Houston and they had a special relationship ever since meeting. You know, Brandy, when she first met Whitney, she was just like, oh my God, I'm meeting my icon. And they went on to have a friendship over the years. Although I've heard that friendship was kind of like on and off for whatever reasons. And some people might say, is that because Whitney was allegedly dating Ray J? Well, some might say that. Was Ray J a runner for, for Whitney? Some might, Some rumors say that. We don't know. We don't know. And I know a lot of people still ask to this day, what was in the note that Whitney Houston gave to Brandy the night, the the day of the pre-Grammy party, the day that she passed away? To this day, Brandy has never spoken what was in that note. I know a lot of people have turned that into something more salacious than it probably was, but it was something for for Brandy and Whitney. Who, who ended up having a friendship after meeting uh, when she was just, what, 16 years old. For the rest of her life. Do you ever do a simple things like go to the grocery store? Yeah, I went yesterday to pop a gas. Yeah? Yeah. And what, kind of, what kind of car were you putting the gas in? I was putting the gas into a white Hummer. Wow. And so do you, do, um, did you get it in your neighborhood so they're already used to seeing you, or did you get it elsewhere? No, I got it in uh, my neighborhood. Do you live a relatively normal life in that in that area where you live? No. You constantly have people in the woods trying to take pictures and all that. Hello. I mean, come on, Wendy. You don't make it any better. <laughs> but um, actually, yeah, I have people in the woods and in the trees and and want to follow me and yeah, the whole nine yards, Wendy. Yeah. Yeah. So when it's just you and Bobby, Christina in the house, the three of you, who who is part of the staff of your house who's always there as well? You know, besides. Jesus. Oh, I got you. Jesus, constantly. Okay. Anybody else may come and go, but he's a constant guy. How's how's your mom doing? Does she live there in the house? And she's a constant three too, but she does not live with me. No, my mother does not. I have family mostly around me: my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my niece. People. Yeah. How did you get along with Bobby's baby's mother? You are the staff, girl. Oh my God, you are so deep. I mean, oh, you're so like you know, like nosy. Oh, I am. You my first nosy man. I am. It's not just you. I'm like this with everybody with me. Yeah, I guess I must be like. Mom? No, he asked the questions. That every other word from him is, but why? But why? I hear you. Yes. Yeah. What did you say again? How do you get along with Bobby's baby's mother? We get along just fine. We get along just fine because we're grown women, and I love that baby because they're my set children, and I care for my children. This, you know, they are mine when they're with me. So, uh, you may come have a relationship with your stepchildren. Me and Bobby's baby's mama don't have any problems because I don't create none and if there is something, I can finish it. So yeah, we, well, we, can, we can talk about it and get an understanding. Has there ever been a conflict as far as maybe Bobby Christina getting more attention from Bobby? No. 
than the other kids? No. There's always that, you know, there's a constant, you know, where the kids get together and they, you know, constant normal, you know, but basically, um, you know, it's, it's pretty normal. But that gives the children, you know, this kind of attention that when they're together, they show it. Yeah. But of course, you know, he's my husband and he lives with me pussy, so she does it more the time. Well, did you get on Gavi after you saw the BET making up Ja Rule's video? Because the rest of the country was kind of like, wow, what's the Bobby? He, Bobby looked kind of tossed up during that video, Whitney. Get him it out. Bobby look high with me. He did. Bobby look. There was Ja Rule in there. There was Bobby. There was other folks with me. So it's about them. Yeah, but but Bobby. Yeah, because they wanted to come sit on his Bobby. You know, as a matter of fact, Bobby was pretty cool, honey. He did his gig. He's 5'11". What? Bob, you yeah. talk to me. Mm-hmm. That's what I heard. Is 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 Bob? I I realize that being married, you know, your money is is you know Bobby's money and vice versa. Right. But when you know, so you guys don't have any money problems. Well, no, Wendy, not to sell my estate as you said on the radio yesterday. Oh, no, I didn't say you were selling your estate for money reasons. I said you were selling your estate to get more privacy. You know. Oh, I understand. No, no. Okay, thank you, darling, for clarifying that. <laughs> You know, I, I, I'm not selling my estate and Bobby and I are doing just fine. Thank you. Were you, were you responsible for Bobby leaving New Edition? I didn't even know him then. No, 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 no. The second time around when they did the, the come home tour. No, no. I said, no, I don't know. They had their own relationship. Have you ever encouraged Bobby to possibly, you know, because the guys from New Edition have interviewed and said that they would love if Bobby came back, you know, that's to the Bobby's group. world. That's not mine. It's his decision. He's a New Edition member. I'm not. Did you ever hear that, that, that people were buzzing that your relationship with Wyclef was really close and that Bobby and you fought over it? Really? Yeah. No, no, no. We don't do that. Wyclef and I are friends. We grew up together in the hood. He for me started to show mine. And that's about as far as that goes. And we musically, we work together. And that's it. There is no battle. There's no fighting. That's crazy. Well, at one point, there was a beef between Bobby and Babyface. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, well why don't you talk to Bobby and Babyface about sex? You know what? You, you are, baby. You are something else. <laughs> I've been waiting to talk to you, Wendy. I love you, darling. When are you coming to the studio? When am I coming to your studio? Yeah. You really want me to come there? I would love that. Oh, my Lord. But we got to make a date, okay? Yes, we do. Look, uh, do you uh, want to have more children? Yes, I do. I want a little boy. Mm. I want a mama's boy. And you're going to be 40 this year, right? Oh, tell the world, why don't you? Oh, you low down dirty dog. Whitney, you look great. <laughs> Thank you, baby. I feel good, too. I Thank mean, you. The, uh, the only thing is that you said... Whitney will never be fat. No. I was like, how dare her? Never. Who is that, a disc on fat girl? No. I just won't be fat. Sorry, it's not good, not healthy. Have you ever heard anybody being fat, being healthy? Well, you know, being extremely fat or being extremely thin, like on with you on the Michael Jackson special. Being extreme is not good. Yeah. Not good at all, okay? Yeah. Not good at all. So, uh, you know, pull it together and move on. You smoke weed? Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 Mariah Carey was on the show and said that she loves you more than ever. I love that little lamb chop. And I just wanted you to know that. How I love you? that lamb chop. She's my girl. Have you? Yes, yeah, she is nice. She's very sweet. She was here like two weeks ago. Yeah, she's a bomb. She denied her breast implants. Do you deny yours? Nah. No. See, that's no. my girl, Whitney. No. I got them, too. I mean, aren't they not? I mean, you know, it's like what? I mean, you know, if you want to go for it, go for it. You know what I mean? Do you ever wish that you got them bigger? No, my husband loves them. Yeah, 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 yeah. He loves them. Yeah. They sit nice. They're very well proportioned with you. It's just that at one point when you lost so much weight, though, they did look like two baseballs on a stage. Yeah, they look really weird. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that when you look at yourself in the mirror, you have some other things about your looks too. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm seeing you. I know how you look. <laughs> Did you guys, you got to pay attention to the shade. She was like, I bet you do. I, I know what, I know how you look. Well, damn. <laughs> damn. What? <laughs> no more, Wendy. No more, baby. Do you keep in touch with Eddie Murphy? Uh, I know you guys were. No. Uh, now, is it that you were showing respect for your husband because you and Eddie dated or the. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Well, that's, to me, that's how it's supposed to be in everyday life. You know what I'm saying? When you go on and you marry me. He's a man, he's a man, he's a man, he's a woman. I mean, we see each other, we speak to each other professionally, and yeah. they goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby has had a reputation occasionally to step out on the marriage. Oh, really? Say the gossip. Okay, thank you. 
Has infidelity been one of the biggest issues in you guys' marriage? No. What would you say the biggest issue is in you all's marriage? You people. You people like to run your mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. 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 If you could, if you could take back anything that you told Diane Sawyer, what would it be? If I could, if I could say something that I didn't say, okay, I wouldn't come to anybody to got a problem with you to kiss my. And I love you, but I don't live for you. I don't live for you. You talk about me. You you, you call me out my name. You you, you you make my mother call me and ask me questions. You make my father sick. You make my brother sick. You make my childhood. You don't talk about me like you know me. Look, I've never, you never seen me in your damn life. But you talk about me. That's not what I said. There's a limit to what you can say. And if I was really like back in the day, no, I'd meet you outside. I'd meet you outside. But I'm a lady and I have a capacity. So I stop you, Wendy. But I love you. But as you know, say, I am. I am. The way that this interview escalated, it went from, I meet you outside to, but I love you. I meet you outside, but I love you. But one of the famous lines from this that I live by, she was like, I love you, but I don't live for you. When she was talking about the public, you have to remember, Whitney was famous at a very young age. And because she became such a huge icon, it alienated her from the rest of the world. And, and there were a lot of moments where she just felt like she wanted to be a regular person. She was unable to do that. So when she says, I love you, but I don't live for you, powerful words that have always stayed with me. Hmm. I know, baby. I'm a fan of your I'm entire just, experience. Though. Not to get no shit like that. That was fucking worth You know what, though? What, boo? I'm a fan of yours, not just the music, Whitney. I'm a fan of you, the woman. Thank you, because my mother's very proud of me, Wendy. She is. She loves me. She, she respects me. That's what matters to me. That my mother loves and respects me. Who's, whose idea was it to set up that Diane Sawyer interview? Me in L.A. Are you done with the talk show circuit? I mean, will you do Larry? So you're done. So you won't go back on Oprah? You won't do Larry King? Oprah and I have a relationship. She and I talk. We'll do something. That's my girl. Yes. Do do any of your do any of your celebrity girlfriends, whether it be Oprah or Angela Bassett or anybody like that, do they ever try to like ride the train of his Whitney on Coke and let me talk to her to get her off? You know, they make you to break you. You know what I mean? That's the name of the game. But I don't break. I'm not made of glass, baby. I come from a line of heritage, of strong heritage, legacy. You can't break me. So when you sit and then it makes me wonder, because Diane Warren wrote the song, I Didn't Know My Own Strength, and that's that's some of the lyrics that are in there. It makes me wonder if this interview inspired Diane Warren. I can't remember, because I've seen a few interviews with Diane Warren talking about some of the songs that she's written. It makes me wonder if when she wrote that song, because a lot of times these songs are written specifically for specific people telling the story that the songwriter believes they want to tell. And during her last album rollout, that was a powerful strong song speaking of oprah winfrey she actually performed that song on oprah oprah at the time as well so i i found the words in this interview that predated that years and it's interesting to hear it again in in the song down you have a little glass of something to drink what's your favorite drink i mean you know is, is it cristal is it you know happy? Yeah. i'm not a drinker baby i, I like to have a flip of wine every now and then and a little bit of drink steam by the sound for the bobby brown like the table with nick with right. god whitney what baby you are a real trip i've been around the world yeah <laughs> yeah how's how's uh dion doing Dion's yeah, doing very well, thank you. We had an auntie who just passed away, a very close auntie to ours, and we just buried her last week, and I saw Dion, and it was really good to see my lady. Yeah. Yeah. So, your father's $100 million lawsuit, is that done? It's, okay. And you guys are, he's dropped the lawsuit, and it's... It's first to Wendy. You guys remember that lawsuit? Her father claims that he was the one who helped broker Whitney's huge record deal, where I believe she made $100 million from that record deal. And you notice in this interview, any time that Wendy Williams brought up her father, she got she had a very visceral, angry reaction to, to that conversation. And, and a lot of people might say it's because Whitney was a, a daddy's girl. So that betrayal, if you saw the movie as well, hit her deep. I love my daddy, but daddy loves me. I believe that, Whitney. I, I know it. I thought it was some mess when I saw it going down. I... Uh, mm. 
Do you think that um, although your parents are divorced, them worrying about you in this demonic thing <laughs> called show business, uh, you think that keeps them together in their own way? Yes. Your father, um, wasn't your father dating or married or something like that? To He's a, married now. Yes, right. wife, yes. Yes. How do you get along with your step mom? Just fine. I get along with Peggy just fine. Peggy. We get along just fine. She's a sweet lady. Does your mom date? Yes, yeah, she does. She minds her business, too. So how will you be spending Valentine's Day? With my husband. I bet you all have wild circus sex, don't you? Oh, my God. Really, don't make me make you outside. Come on now, you getting too... <laughs> don't make me meet you outside. Okay, so for everyone that was giving credit to the meet you outside girl, um, bad, bad baby. No, it was Whitney first, okay? Always appropriating. But I can just... It, it, you could take a picture, couldn't you? Yeah, you were such nasty. a... <laughs> such called her nasty. People. You're nasty. Just wild circus back. <laughs> You know what, Whitney? Would you what? ever think? Would you ever think about writing a book on your life? I might somewhere down the line. I wrote a book. Um, it, it's with um, Atrium Books. They're mm -hmm. they're a boutique label of Simon and Schuster, and it comes out in fall of two thousand three. Oh, I'm gonna get it. And I just found. Are that, you reading yourself? Yes, I am. Good. Yeah, and you want to know what, Whitney? I what, found right? that it it was the most therapeutic thing. I know. That I've I never done in my life. I know. See, I do that, but I do it with my spiritual partner. You see what I'm saying? You know, I do it with my prayer partner, and, you know, that's my therapy. Do you still go to church? Yeah. What church do you go to? Oh, well, I feel like it. It's just right there in my heart. Okay, okay, I got you. Uh-huh. Well, Whitney, I want to thank you. Thank you, Wendy. For giving me this moment and not hanging up the phone. No, I wouldn't do that to you, baby. And be we'll talk through. And being as sassy as you want to be. <laughs> uh, Wendy, I love you because you support me and um, you've, been, you've been good to me on the radio. However, you know, watch what you say, baby girl. But Whitney, watch what you do. And if I know it's not, you don't even know what I do. Like you said, you never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me. But talk about me. So watch what you say. That's all, baby girl. That's all I'm asking you. Watch what the f you say. But Whitney, what baby? I would love to have you come in the studio. Okay, love. I don't know. You call my machine, I'll call you. I would be sassy as you. I, I have to replay that because that became a legendary part of this Wendy Williams and Whitney Houston interview. So many people still quote Whitney because there were so many elevations. One minute we're good, the next minute it's like mad, and then it's like, but I love you. Oh, okay. Wanna be. <laughs> Wendy, I love you because you support me and um, you've, been, you've been good to me on the radio. However, you know, watch what you say, baby girl. But Whitney, watch what you do. And if I know it's not, you don't even know what I do. Like you said, you never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me, but the fuck about me. So watch what you say. That's all, baby girl. That's all I'm asking you is watch what the fuck you say. But Whitney, what, baby? I would love to have you come in the studio. Okay, love. I love you. Good. You call my machine, I'll call yours. Oh. I would, I would Sarcasm. love to be able to All right. read your body language. I don't have any idea. I'm sitting here chilling on the Miami balcony just talking to you. Are you? Yeah, baby. Just finished eating some chicken. What's the weather like? It's like 74. And who's all in the room there? It's my dog and my secretary and, and Joey Payne from Arrest Records, who is pacing the floor. And why is Joey pacing? He wants and to... he's like, you know, you, you, you don't do you feeling froggy, but not leap. <laughs> Whitney, have you ever, has it ever gotten so bad we ever would consider suicide? Hell no. Got a child to live for. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Work with me. I won't leave you. I love you, Whitney. I love you too, Wendy. You take care. You too, baby. Bye. Be blessed. Wow. Wow. What a journey. What a journey that interview was. I haven't listened to it in a very long time. So I'm literally listening to it a very first time in a very long time with you guys. And I said, I think based off of everything that played out yesterday and what's playing out today, and, and I said this on Twitter as well, feel what you're feeling. Your feelings are valid when it comes to this election. But one of the other things that I said during our five, almost five hour stream last night covering this election is that we've been through this, this, we've been in this position before. 
So we know how to deal with that. And we got through that. So let that be your motivations that, you know, we've been through a lot worse. We went through a whole pandemic. Those of us that are living now that have seen the creation of the Internet, the creation of social media, we've seen a pandemic. We've seen some of the worst uh, natural disasters in history. We've seen some of the craziest things in politics. But we are all still here. I always say this when we talk about someone that we've lost. We were just talking about Quincy Jones this past week. We were talking about Prince's sister, uh, Tyka, passing away. I always tell you when we lose someone, it's a reminder to the living to live more fully. So let's feel your feelings, but not let's not dwell in it beyond that. I hope you guys enjoyed this special episode that we will be releasing on the podcast first and then on YouTube a little bit later on. So make sure you subscribe to both places. And while you're there, don't forget to give us a five-star rating on Kempire's podcast, on Apple Podcasts, and on Spotify. And of course, make make sure you subscribe to the Kempire YouTube channel as well. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I will see you all in the next one. And of course, rest in peace to Whitney Houston. Thanks for tuning in to Kempire here on the Kempire Radio Podcast. As always, don't forget to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. And for everything Kempire Radio, head on over to KempireRadio.com.